Bamboo Studio isn't just for slicing, it can also be used to make minor edits to 3D designs, or even design some things from scratch. If you caught my tutorial on the Bamboo Studio text tool, you'll know how easy it is to customize 3D designs with text. But what if, rather than text, you wanted to apply a logo or a detailed graphic to your model, or even print a logo as a standalone object? For that, you'll want to take advantage of Bamboo Studio's SVG features. In this video, we'll take a quick look at what SVGs are, and then I'll guide you through how you can use them in Bamboo Studio, covering what you can do with them and how. So, let's take a look. An SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphic, is basically just a type of 2D image format. But unlike things like JPEGs and PNGs, which consist of pixels, which are just single dots of colour, an SVG is made up of lines, shapes, and text defined by code. Due to the way that an SVG is made, they don't lose quality when they're scaled, and they feature perfectly smooth curves, rather than ones that are just made up of jagged arrays of pixels. As a result, SVGs are commonly used for designing things like logos, because they can then be scaled as big or small as they need for different use cases, whilst retaining their quality. There's now a number of different ways that SVGs can be used directly inside Bamboo Studio, so let's take a look at them. The first option allows you to extrude an SVG, which is intrinsically 2D, into a 3D printable model. To do this, all you need to do is right-click on the build plate, hover over Add Primitive, and then select SVG down at the bottom. Find and select the SVG you'd like to import, then click Open. It will be added to your build plate and automatically extruded into a 3D shape. You can then adjust things like sizing and positioning. At the top here, we get a preview of the SVG as Bamboo Studio sees it. Below that, next to the name, is a Reload button. So if you made edits to the SVG since importing it into Bamboo Studio, you can click Reload here and it will update the SVG in the slicer to the current state of the file where you imported it from. To the right of that, you have three more options. The first allows you to replace the SVG that you currently have selected with a different SVG file from your computer, maintaining the same positioning data. The last of these three options allows you to save or export this SVG as a new file, including any adjustments you've made in the slicer. The middle option, Bake to Model, converts it into a 3D model exactly as you see it now, and prevents any further changes via the SVG menu. Generally, you'll only need to do this if you want to use the Mesh Boolean tool. The depth is the distance that the SVG has been extruded, so with it being flat on the bed by default, this is the Z axis. You can enter the depth manually, or you can use the plus and minus buttons to adjust it 1mm at a time. The size is your X and Y dimensions. You can adjust this by just clicking and dragging this blue line left and right. By default, your X and Y are locked, so as you adjust one, it adjusts both. But if you undo the lock, you can then manually enter the dimensions of one and it won't affect the other. I'll reset this for now and I'll scale it down to a decent size. Rotation is as it sounds. You can edit this by using the manipulator bar on the print bed, by dragging the blue line left and right, or clicking the edit button and entering a number. Below that is Mirror, which allows you to mirror the SVG in both the X and the Y axis. Now if you've deselected your SVG extrusion, but want to make further changes in the future in the SVG menu, just right click on the model, and select Edit SVG. You can also go to the Object List in Objects, right click there, and also select Edit SVG here. So that is the first way that you can use an SVG in Bamboo Studio, converting it into a 3D printable model. But what if you wanted to apply an SVG to an existing model? Well to do that, with the model that you want to apply the SVG to already imported, right click on it, go to Add Part, and select SVG. Navigate to and select the SVG that you want, and click Open. We have a similar set of options, but with some differences. First, let's get it scaled down a bit and get it positioned. Click and drag the yellow cube. The SVG will always be stuck to the side of the model that you've added it to, and will rotate to be flush with whatever surface you've placed the cube on. The first two options are exactly the same as before, where we can define both the depth and the size. Below them is a checkbox, Use Surface. 
With that selected, if the SVG model is positioned so it extends beyond the boundaries of the surface it's on, it will be cropped to the surface limits. It also wraps the outer edge of the SVG around the surface. This can be great for applying an SVG to a curved surface. The next option is From Surface. This allows you to select the distance that the SVG will be placed from the surface of your main object. You can move this both away from the object and also into the object. The maximum distance that you can move this is 200% of the set depth. So with 10mm set for the depth, it will allow you to go from minus 20 to 20mm from the surface. If I set this to 5mm, it will let me go from minus 10 to 10mm from the surface. And to reset that, I can either use the reset button to the left or just click edit and enter zero. Rotation holds no surprises and just allows you to rotate it as before. This is the same with mirror. These are the exact same features as we saw in the earlier section of this video. Below this, we have operation and this denotes what the SVG that you've applied to this model will actually do. The default pre-selected here is join and with join selected, once sliced, the SVG model will just be added as an extension of the object you've applied it to. You can also then select it from the objects list on the left and change settings such as the color option. If we go back to the SVG menu by right clicking on the object in the object list and selecting edit SVG, the next option is cut. Cut does the opposite. This moves the SVG inside your main object and when slicing will remove the overlapped area from the model. This can be a great way of having logos or patterns engraved into your model. If we add one more SVG to our object, this time we'll set this as a modifier. This won't add or remove any mass from the original model, but will allow you to change settings for any areas that your added SVG overlays with the original model. With any of these operations selected, you can change the settings by selecting the SVG edition in the object's list and then changing the settings below. As we saw earlier, you can change the filament used for that object by right clicking on it and then selecting change filament and then selecting the filament that you'd like to use for just that section. So with this modifier I've applied to the front here, I could set a fuzzy skin and change the filament type and then those settings will be painted onto any part of the original object that the modifying shape interacts with. So let's get that printed and take a look at how it comes out. And here it is, this is a 2D SVG extruded into a 3D model with an SVG extruded out the top of that model, a different SVG cut into the face of that model, and then an SVG modifier with fuzzy skin and a different color applied. I really hope you found this video useful and interesting and if you did please do hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my future tutorials and videos on 3D printing and maker tech. If you find my videos especially helpful and want to support me making more content like this in the future, you can hit the join button below my videos to become a channel member, getting early access to my videos, a members discount at 3drevolutionstore.com and a bunch more. Either way, thanks very much everyone and until next time, happy printing. A massive thank you to my channel members for your support, it really does mean a lot. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't seen it yet, you might want to check out my tutorial on the Bamboo Studio text tool. Otherwise, pop another video on to learn something new or have some fun. Thanks very much everyone and until next time, happy printing.